Hey guys, welcome. Fedora 42. And this is the Plasma version 6.4.4 using a 6.15 series kernel. And I'm filming in Wayland and 1080 today. I'll show you some mini tips regarding this. Toward the end of the video, if you're in interested in instantaneous reboot and power off icons, I'll also show you two ways of making those. One in your menu which you can continually replace the icon or just generate one off, off your desktop. But uh, we're going to start with software. So discover uh, and settings. So during the installation process and uh, your first reboot or first login, um, if you go through that little mini screen, there'll be one area where it'll ask you for additional repositories. You may want to pay attention to that instead of closing the box right away. So you can choose other repositories to add to the existing ones. So I did that. Your updater is here. I have uh, some system upgrade stuff that I could take care of right now, but I'm not. And generally after you update all, you will probably get an option of, do you want to restart the machine as soon as it gets finished or what do you want to do? Because generally, Fedora requires a reboot to install a system upgrade, for instance. Uh, most of this stuff is pretty simple. So if we're just doing, let's say, GIMP, um, this will also tell you if you have additional repositories these are coming from. Uh, GIMP is very similar to Photoshop if you've never used it. All of my almost 600 videos, I have used GIMP and also on my previous channel. So I'm probably have made over yeah, about a thousand videos in the last eight to ten years. In either case, Flathub, Fedora Flatpaks, and Fedora Linux are the options to install that. The uh, screenshots are pretty simple. If uh, it has multiple, you'll just walk through the windows and then install, picking your source. All right, I'm not really going to delve too much in the software discover center. I think it's well intuitive. All right, your panel bar, right click and uh, show panel configuration. You can uh, make it taller um, by changing that and also uh, the rest of these tools like position alignment and width. At the same token, um, you can also add these things called widgets. So right click, add widgets there and right click on the Fedora icon add widgets. Your file manager is Dolphin and for the most part it's uh, fairly intuitive. Most people know how to do this mm -hmm. but for the brand new users because we do have a lot of people that are migrating from maybe Windows um, you can just hold down your control key and then scroll with your computer mouse to make them smaller and then hold down your control key to scroll back up. Okay. So if you are wondering about the screen ripping, um, I think that had a little bit to do with Wayland. But in either case, it's an AMD graphics card, if you're curious. So I have a tar backup in here, and how do we produce a tar backup? So I'm going to do one of those for you, in case you want to just make a quick copy of your personal files after you populated your folders with stuff. It's always a good idea to make backups. I usually, um, I call it times three. You should always have a backup on your local system, another device, and possibly the cloud, if you can afford cloud storage. A lot of people can't, but that's okay. I can just show you how to do that with an internal hard drive or an external, it doesn't matter. I usually, if you wanna do all of your personal folders, minus the hidden ones, is control A as an Apple, and then right click. Hit compress, you have the option, uh, a quick archive of tar.gz that is compressed and uh, archive.zip. Both of them are compressed and they will take some time if you got tons of files. However, you can also select compress too and you'll have an option if they drop down tree from seven all the way down to zip and you can also pick tar. Tape archive is not compressed. Okay, and I'm going to basically call it backup and then put today's date, which would be 8-27. I'll just put in 25 because this is a static backup, backup of my personal files. And it's finished. 
So the folder itself, uh, or the file itself, is not compressed. A tar by itself without the other extension like GZ is not compressed. That's uh, 250 megabytes. Right. Depending on how many files, it may take a little bit longer, but if you've got a fairly fast drive, tar backups can be done extremely fast. I'm going to drag it over to my green backup folder. I'm going to move it there. I can also change the color of that folder in case I wanted it red or yellow or some other color. Blue, well, not, that's too close to the theme, so I'll use green. Whenever you're dealing with this file, I would, uh, as again, I, I use the times three factor. You have the local backup here, but what happens when you lose the whole drive? Well, sometimes we want to take a copy and put these on backup on separate devices, whether they're internal hard drives or external, that's up to you. But whenever you're wanting to um, put these images back or the documents back or the pictures or whatever it might be, uh, you can just open up a file like this. And if this is a brand new installation, you can just grab these things and throw them in whatever folder you want. So in my case, I will um, just use this PDF right here. And just doing one thing. I'm not extracting all of them. I just did one item in here. I can do the same with a music file or even an indi individual um, song even. You get the idea? Okay. These come in handy for lots of purposes. Not only for backups, but if you set up another machine, you can also use uh, or utilize your personal files like music or pictures to populate the folders. I generally have a demo drive for that. But this is the poor man's way of doing that. But it's also, again, a backup of all these files. Now, Control H will show you your hidden files, which I did not copy. And generally, most people don't need those. OK, Control H. So this split here, you can also perform using F3. Okay. If you were to take a look at the hamburger menu, um, it's not really visible that quickly, but you can look at the other settings in here. And more importantly, just trust me, it's called split. The cool thing about this is you can make this side of the screen, maybe this demo drive or backup drive. Then you can drag and drop files. So currently this is the home folder and I'll just do downloads. And this is my demo drive. I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and take my mouse and just travel over the medium and without clicking. And at the same moment, I'm scrolling to resize these things. Okay. As I go down, I, the screen tearing is probably wailing, but I just click in here and it self-corrected itself. But in either case, I am not clicking when I'm resizing. All I'm doing is moving back and forth. Okay. Now I'll click in here so it'll, well, I'll just give it a second and I'll make these smaller. Okay. Now let's go back in here and grab some files. Um, miscellaneous documents drag and drop, we have the option of move, copy, or link. If I decide to hold down the control key, grab and drop, that is a copy. Bash list. Clicking this over here, I'm going to go to the network and grab a shared folder. I'm waiting for it to scan the network. And um, here's the SharePoint. What do I want? Mm, I'll just grab a piece of clip art. Holding down, now you see no thumbnails because generally that's default for network stuff. And you'll see the thumbnail now, as soon as I dragged it over. I was holding the control key down when I was doing this. If I didn't hold down the control key and I straight dragged, then it's gonna ask me a question. Move, copy, link, move, or cancel. I'm just gonna do copy. 
your standard folder. I'm going to close the split screen for a second. Go back to pictures. Um, if you decide to hit the space bar, so first of all, click on an image. And uh, here I'll click out for a second. I'm going to end this selection. And uh, we'll do painter head guy and hit the space bar. I have copy, cut, rename, move to trash, open with Gwen view, and more. There's lots of things you can do by just doing the space bar after clicking that. Now, of course, if I double click, this opens this with Gwen view. And you can certainly drag the, um, the zoom factor here, or you can hold down the control key. And I'm going to use this hand. I'm going to put my hand next to his and scroll in and scroll back out. I'm holding down the control key while scrolling on my computer mouse. Now I'm going to do his nose. Just a couple of little zoom tricks for you. Let go of the control key when you get it. You're not resizing the image. You're just zooming in on it. That's all this is doing. So your network is here. And again, I was using SMB earlier. I didn't have to type it in there. And my devices are internal drives, external drives. Your trash can is here. I don't really need an extra icon on my desktop for that. But speaking of desktops, right click, create new. Uh, link to application, that would be this one. And um, wallpapers. So I added uh, this one here. That's why there's a trash can. These do not have trash cans because they're protected by root permissions. This one's not. I can remove the wallpaper, but it does not remove my actual uh, image from my file manager because you'll see it in here in a second. Painter hat guy is right here. But in either case, um, they've got some nifty looking wallpaper, whatever you're into. Just don't forget to hit, hit apply. Okay, it's got some nice, nice features. Okay, right click on your panel bar. You can resize the panel, you can do the other positions, you can also add widgets. So basically, if you're coming in from fresh, right click, add and manage widgets. Toys. Right click on the Fedora icon, widgets here also. You can also get new ones. All right. Um, your settings obviously are fairly intuitive. Um, you have themes. You have, um, let's do, well, we can do global themes. And when you do that, it actually opens up subcategories. And if you're interested in making your mouse cursor that comes with the system bigger, it's done in here. Uh, size 12 is kind of small. Remember, I'm filming in 1080. 72. And generally, if you are going to add mouse cursors, install it from a file, or you can also get new, I do recommend that you log out of your system and back in if you're changing cursors. Otherwise, sometimes it has the remnants of the old and the new. Okay, other than that, I'm just gonna talk about these if you wanna hang on. Right click, create new, link to application. Anytime you create reboot now or power off icons, these are instantaneous. They don't ask any questions. I double click and it starts rebooting or powering the system off. Most of your stuff, if you do this, if you want to create it on your desktop, it's right click, create new, link to app. Under the application, you give it a name. Under the program, you want to put uh, system, CTL, and then for the argument, it's power off. And uh, the icon is done over here. You pick the icon from either applications or all. They, they're just icons. Has nothing else to do with anything. All right, so I'm gonna create that on the desktop and it takes the name test for. The commando, however, 
is done through here. System CTL is the process command and then power off is literally what that means. Be very careful using these. However, these are singles. In other words, when I delete that, they're no longer part of your Fedora menu. You can right click and hit edit application and create also these. Put them in a subcategory. I'm gonna do mine in system. I'm gonna hit new item and you give it a name. I'll call that one test five. Okay, test five doesn't have an icon, so let's pick one. You pick whatever you want. They're just plain old icons. This is what I picked on that one. So I'll use the same icon. So the program is systemctl. And the command line argument is power off. Okay, if you got the icon and a name and program and command line, hit save. Okay, it's called, gonna be called test five. Even KRunner can find this. There's test five there. I dare not click that. It'll power my system off in a heartbeat. However, it is also in here. There is test five right there. And I can redistribute that to the desktop later or pin it to the task manager. That one I don't recommend because that's a single click and it'll power down your system in a heartbeat. But these are double clicks, so I'm pretty safe about moving them around. So um, this one uses a different command because it's a reboot command, but it's essentially systemctl, lowercase, and the argument is reboot. Again, don't forget to assign it an icon if you want one. Otherwise, it's just generic. So these were created on the desktop. This one here was created inside the menu by edit applications. And you can see it in here. So if I break down the tree here, there's test five, and this one is called power off. You can see it right there. It still uses system CTL power off. And when I double click this icon, it will definitely shut down my system instantaneously. Save your work if you're gonna create these. Now that includes your web browsers. Always save your work, because these are fast shutdowns. Very fast. As opposed to these, have a timer of 30 seconds. Okay. These are instantaneous. Hopefully you enjoyed some of these mini tips. Thank you for watching.